Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's live stream. I'm really excited. Uh, we've got an all South Aussie crew with us tonight. <laughs> My name is Matt and I'm the events officer here at the Adelaide campus. Um, and I'm joined by Mike Gordon, 3D animation and visual effects teacher here as well at the Adelaide campus. Um, a big welcome and thank you so much for being with us tonight, Mike. That's fine. Thanks heaps, Matt. No worries. So uh, I hope everyone's got their popcorn and ready for a good show. We're going to be diving into a compositing workshop tonight um, and we're going to be, or Mike, I should say, definitely not me, um, showing us uh, uh, some skills in the program Nuke, which is used throughout the um, uh, film industry as well. So I'm really excited. Um, but before we jump into the workshop, Mike, did you just want to tell uh, everyone a little bit about yourself? Sure thing. My name's Mike Gordon, as you just heard. I've been a visual effects artist for about 25 years. Um, I've worked on probably about 50 music videos. We'll be going through um, a little bit of uh, one of the music videos we did a few years ago for a band called Stonefield. Um, you can look that up on YouTube if you want. The, uh, the clip was called Put Your Curse On Me. And um, I'm just going to go through one of these shots uh, just to show you sort of the power of Nuke and uh, what you can do with using green screen footage and layering up some images to create a really, really beautiful shot. We'll also put a bit of a camera move in it uh, to make it look 3D. There wasn't a camera move in the original footage, but uh, with Nuke, you can actually layer up footage uh, in a 3D space and uh, make it look as though the illusion of camera is actually moving through the footage. So it's really exciting stuff. Fantastic. Well, I know very little about compositing myself, so I know I'm really intrigued on the, or to see some skills and to learn a bit more about it. So um, without any further ado, let's jump into it. So let's flip over here so we can all see Mike's screen. And Mike, when you're ready, take it away. Sure thing. Thanks heaps, Matt. Here we are looking at the interface of Nuke, which is the industry, industry standard of uh, 3D compositing. Um, you'll see this used on big feature films, music videos, uh, TV, uh, but it's used throughout the industry. It's uh, called a node-based compositor, which means there's a whole heap of little nodes that you connect up together uh, in order to create a shot. And uh, what we're going to start here is just looking at the uh, some camera footage that we had um, of one of the band members. And we shot this, obviously, against green screen, as you can see. And the first thing I'm going to do is just, I'm going to go through this quite quickly, not get too much into detail, just sort of go through some of the concepts. Um, basically, the way I would have brought this up is I just would have typed, uh, just would have hit tab, I'd type right, and I'd bring in a right node, which is what you'd see, oh, sorry, a read node, which is what, what you'd see here. Uh, read. Read node, I would have loaded in uh, that image into here, and you can see the result here. I've got a, uh, a shot of this uh, young lady against the green screen, 
And um, basically what she's doing at the moment, it was a locked off shot, the camera wasn't moving at all. Mm. She's so just looking up to look at the camera. Yeah. So what uh, the first step to do is to try and get rid of some of this green. Um, these days, uh, there are some new technology coming out. Uh, AIE is actually one of the first campuses, or is the first campus in the world, the first series of campuses, I should say, in the world to uh, bring up uh, the big LED backgrounds instead of using a green screen. Um, but uh, for now, we'll show you the traditional method and um, you can look at the website later on and see what we're doing with virtual cinematography, which is a really exciting new way of looking at things. Yeah. Uh, but for now, I'll just talk about how green screen, uh, green screen is going to be still around for ages, even though this is great LED background technology, which you might have seen in The Mandalorian. But uh, green screen is a fantastic way of getting rid of uh, everything in the background so you can replace it with another piece of footage or lots of different elements of footage um, so that you can actually put these characters into wherever you like, into space, into, in this place, it was in some kind of mystical voodoo world uh, that this character was living within. Uh, what we do is we bring in a node called Keylight, which is a, uh, a little node connected up to the source here. As you can see, I've connected it all up already uh, just so that we can go through this fairly quickly. Um, when I activate Keylight, you can see there's a hell of a lot of controls here. And uh, basically what these controls are doing is telling uh, the, uh, the node here to look at this green in the background and pretty much just get rid of it. Um, there's a lot of little settings that I've tweaked here because it takes a little bit of time to actually get rid of all the spill and things like that. But uh, when I activate this node, you can see that um, I've pretty much got rid of most of the, the background there. Um, obviously, as I said, there's a whole lot of controls that I've actually tweaked um, to get rid of this thing. But uh, for the moment, we won't go through those because that's all fairly technical. Um, it's really just about trying to get a good edge around things and trying to balance the screen against the green, uh, trying to get rid of sort of some green spill that's on the character, etc. Um, once we've got this image, you can actually see uh, there's a mat. This is what the mat looks like, uh, not Matt Salas, Matt the uh, MWTE, which means uh, this, this kind of technology was invented you know, almost a century ago for getting rid of uh, backgrounds. Um, the final result is that. And uh, what we're going to do is put this character over this background. We're also going to grade it uh, to make it sit a little bit more evenly with her. Uh, what I've actually done is I've rendered this out already. So I've got uh, this completely ready to go. So it doesn't have to go through this key light node, which actually takes a little bit of time to render. So we don't want to wait around for that. So I've actually rendered this out already so that there's uh, no background at all in there. And uh, we're going to composite it over this background. We've also got these grade nodes, as I said, which uh, are just a way of, uh, if I activate that, it's a way of changing the color of the background to sort of suit um, the color of the foreground. So it all sort of merges together really, really nicely. Um, and we also do that with the character itself as well. The camera footage started off like this. I did a little bit of a grade on it to bring up the, uh, the whites. Um, I did a bit of a color correct to bring down some of the blacks. And um, what I've actually done with this is put it into a, um, a sort of sequence where you can see one node feeds into another node, into another node. Um, these cards that I've got here are basically 3D cards in space. So what this looks like, I'll go to the scene, I've connected all this together. I've got her over the background, I've got it graded here. There's two cards, one with the background, one with Sarah on it, it's the foreground. And um, if we look into this scene, that I've created here. There's actually a camera attached to it as well, another node. And we can actually see that these two uh, bits of footage are actually sitting independently of each other in 3D space, which is a really, really cool way of actually being able to do a bit of a camera move in that wasn't actually in the original footage, really make it look as though it's in a 3D space. Uh, you can see there's this little camera over here. And uh, if we look at the camera, there's a uh, translate um, uh, sort of set of numbers here, which enables the camera to move. We can move it backwards and forwards. And what I've done is I've really just put in a little bit, I'll just open up this curve editor, 
Um, and you can see here, there's a little curve that just goes between, um, I've got it at frame 150 going through to frame 300. And the camera is basically just going to move slowly towards Sarah. And uh, because this background is sort of right actually in the background in 3D space, if we hit tab, I'll go back to it. Actually, I'll go back to the node graph. I'll go right down to the bottom so we can see it rendered. And um, as we can see, we've got Sarah against the background. And um, when the camera moves, it actually moves towards her. And the background in the background actually feels as though it's actually being uh, moved towards in 3D space. I've got a question for you, um, Mike. Was sure. this um, project of yours that you created, <clears throat> was this uh, one of your freelance pieces or was this while you were at a studio or uh, freelance while you were at a studio? That's right. It was. I was freelance working with uh, Pirate Films yeah. uh, with a great director called Bart Borghese and um, it was pretty much just uh, him and myself working on this thing. He did some of the grading. Yeah. Uh, he did. Uh, he was. He had a small team, very very small team on this mm -hmm. stuff, but achieved a really fantastic result. Um, we were the only two compositors working on it as well, so uh, we could really pump out a lot of shots really, really quickly. Yeah. I think we had about six weeks to do this or so, so a relatively you know, good amount of time. But um, for actually every single shot in this music video was against green screen, it was actually a pretty good feat. We actually were pretty proud of ourselves. Um, <laughs> we did a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I take really it the, cool. the client would have been, uh, client was happy? Very happy. Client was very happy. Um, if you look up, put your curse on me in uh, YouTube uh, by Stonefield, you can see the end result of this music video. Um, all the different characters were against all these different backgrounds and uh, really, really interesting stuff. Now, the other thing I wanted to uh, show you was uh, the way these things, I mean, I've got this color corrected. I've also got a grade on the end here that if I activate that, you can create a little bit of a vignette around it, which I've got a, a rotoscope, which is just a, a um, uh, sort of ellipsoid that's uh, cutting off the areas that I can make darker. Um, and I've also got a whole heap of things that I set up here, a whole lot of roses that I wanted to put in the foreground in order to uh, make the shot really feel like it's in 3D space. Now, what I've also done with these roses is I've put a whole lot of little defocus nodes, as you can see here, which make them blurry, uh, which really feels as though we've got sort of a bit of a depth to the camera as it goes into the background. And uh, when we connect that rose scene, which I've obviously already connected up uh, into our scene, we can see we've got these roses connected here. If I press tab, we can see um, that these roses all exist in 3D space. I can move them around all over the place. Um, if I select one here, um, I'll just try moving this around. Where is one? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to move the rose. I'm trying to move the rose, not the card. Anyway, so the card itself is the thing we move, and um, we can really sort of position these wherever we want, uh, move them around. Uh, we can grade them independently and uh, just really make the shot sing. Did you model and texture these roses or were they? These roses actually were just photographs of roses against oh. green screen again. Yeah. And uh, so we went through just in Photoshop, um, yeah. went through and actually pulled the keys of these roses so that we didn't have to actually uh, key them in the program itself. So it's a lot faster to render when you actually do this kind of compositing beforehand and uh, bring it in as a separate element. Um, so yeah, positioned these in all different locations. I might sort of drag them out a little bit to give it a little bit more of a sense of depth. How do you find the node base system? A node-based a node based system, oh, I almost said a nose-based system, I was thinking of roses, but a node-based a node -based system is fantastic because yeah. um, compared to a layer-based system like After Effects, another fantastic compositing program, um, you can really uh, have incredibly complex scenes set up. Uh, you can plug them all into uh, different uh, locations um, and put nodes pretty much everywhere. With a layer-based system like After Effects, you have so many layers 
yeah. that it's really, really hard to keep track of. Uh, with a node-based system like we have here, um, much, much easier to keep track of. You do have to sort of keep things tidy. I mean, I spend a little bit of time putting in all these little um, dots, you know, put it on a little dot here and, I, uh... you know, I can, I can sort of rejig these around. One of the most important things you do when you're a compositor is keep things really, really neat so that um, other people, if they're taking the shot on, can look at it, read it, and know exactly what's going on. Mm. Um, very, I... very important. I've got, I've got a bit of OCD and I'm not going to lie, this node-based system, it looks terrific. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like it's settling, fun. yeah, very organized, it's very, fun. yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the great thing about having a camera in there as well is, um, as I said, we can move this camera. Uh, we've got a little um, uh, little bit of a movement on it. You can see the camera can move in and out like this. If we look at this as the scene, we can see the camera actually moving in and out. You can see that. And it actually gives us great parallax with these roses as well. They're really, so they're right in the foreground and that background is right in the background as well. I'll just show the curve editor again. So basically, oh, I actually made a little, sort of automatically creates these uh, curves. So as soon as I moved that, it actually created a, uh, uh, a little um, extra thing. Actually, I might move this in a little bit further. One thing I'd uh, probably like to do here is just uh, match some of the greens that are in uh, Sarah to the background. So I'd use this grade node here, or I could use a color correct node, but I might as well just use this grade node at the moment. And I can actually uh, correct the green so that it sits a little bit more nicely with her green in the foreground. I'll also just put a little bit, might make it a little bit darker as well. There we go, that's looking a little bit nicer. Another thing I might do is make these roses a little bit more blurry. Uh, they're just looking as though they're sort of sitting on the same plane as her at the moment. So I could use these defocus nodes to really make them a lot more blurry. I might have to go a bit earlier in the scene so you can see that. Yeah, we can see these roses are a lot more blurry and they really look as though they're actually right in front of the scene. Another thing I might do is um, just put a blur node into the background, make this a little bit more blurry. So it gives it a bit more of a 3D effect. And I would just blur in a blur node, basically just stick it right in the middle there. And I can just increase the size of the blur. So we can see those skulls at the background are really blurring out. Fantastic. I might put a little bit more blur on some of these roses as well. Um, as I said, I've already set this all up. I didn't want to bore everyone setting all these uh, uh, little things up. But as you can see, um, it's just I just bring in um, a picture. Um, I've attached a defocus node to it. I've attached that to a card, which uh, you see when you go into the uh, 3D view. And um, I've just spent a little bit of time arranging everything in 3D space, as you see. It's a really fantastic way of actually getting a camera move into a shot when there was no camera move in the first place. Here's the roses by themselves, the whole scene together. And with that camera move, actually this is going to be a bit shorter than I thought this, uh, this demonstration. I think I've rushed through it a little bit too much. <laughs> Maybe we could do a little bit more color correction and just see if we can get her sort of Sorry. looking a little bit more uh, as though she sits sitting in there a bit better. For any uh, for anyone watching um, that knows Nuke, if you have a bit of a challenge for Mike, see if he's <laughs> uh, see if he's up to it in terms of uh, I know zero when it comes to Nuke and compositing, so I could not throw you a challenge even if I wanted Mike. <laughs> um, oh, that's okay. Look, some of these things take a little bit of time, so I don't want to bore anyone sort of. Um, <laughs> fiddling around, uh, but um, I just really wanted to show how powerful this system is. Um, mm. The uh, Obviously, pulling a key took a little bit of time, um, so I didn't want to bore everyone with that. Maybe I could have, but uh, <laughs> I really just wanted to show everyone how this how a scene like this comes together um, and, and can look really, really fantastic, actually quite quickly. Um, 
I do have um, in chat, someone uh, did ask a, a minute ago uh, who uses Blender and they're just talking about some, uh, some of the software that's used, I guess, in just art and film and games um, sure and any ZBrush fans out there as well. I'm super excited. I'm about to start a certificate three in screen and media. Hopefully I get to use some ZBrush. I'm really excited to learn it. Um, but a question for you, Mike, is with um, Nuke, so if you want to model and texture um, assets and, and then transport them into Nuke, is it compatible and you, that's, is, is it easy to do so? So if you wanted to model, say like tables, chairs, etc., cetera, um, and then put them in, simple yes. process. Yeah. You can actually put uh, 3D objects directly in Nuke. Yeah. Um, it's um, yeah, there's, a, there's a few different ways you can do it, uh, but um, yeah, you can actually put 3D objects directly in Nuke. Yeah. Um, Is that common in the industry, or not? Not so much because you can just, as as you've done with the roses, take photos and <laughs> use those, which are pretty. It's a bit of both. It's a bit yeah. of both. It really depends on uh, what it's called for. Usually, uh, you would actually. Uh, track a camera move if there's a camera move in a scene that's already there I mean obviously we've created this camera move mm. but uh, if there's already a camera move in the scene you can use Nuke to actually track the data in the scene and it'll actually uh, put animation on this camera that exactly matches what the original camera would have done uh, so then you can actually place 3D objects in your scene and um, the 3D objects will actually sit exactly where they should relative to the the tracked camera which is an amazing yeah. amazing thing to be able to do um let's just have a look at the end result of this oh actually that's right i was going to quickly just do a bit of a grade on sarah just to make it look sit a little bit better in the background we've got a color correct node here uh the color correct node is separated up with the shadows midtones, and the highlights and at this stage, maybe you want to bring a little bit of green out of the mid-tones. So I might, let's have a look, turn down, turn the green a tiny bit in the mid-tones. As you can see, we're bringing in some, really bringing in this red here to really match with the roses. Um, I might want to pop a little bit more contrast in the shadows to really match the background. There, you can see the darks there are really sinking back into the background. So it's a real process of tweaking, making things all sort of match together, as it were. Um, what else should I do? Maybe with the might bring the gamma of the red down in the highlights a little bit. It's pretty subtle, so not really that noticeable, but. Um, yeah, that's looking a little bit better, I think, than the original. Originally, we had uh, this, and now we've ended up with this, which is a lot richer kind of yeah. look. Yeah. And we did the same with the background as well. We uh, put a grade note on it. If I turn that off, that's what the background originally looked like. And without the blur, it was very sort of uh, flat. Uh, put the blur on, makes it really look as though it's sit sitting into the background a lot better. And uh, then we put a grade on and um, we really sort of start getting this image to sing. How powerful is Nuke um, in regard to assets that you're putting into uh, the scene? Are there, if you, I'm imagining in film there can be some quite complex scenes with a lot of assets. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you need to be a bit careful with how many you're putting in? Um, and of course as well, how much detail? So if you're putting in a table and it's really high poly, do you need to watch a poly count or is it all pretty... Yeah, like any 3D program, you really sort of have to uh, think about your assets, but the sky's the limit, really. Um, on big feature films, these, uh, I mean, this this is an extremely simple uh, composite compared to some feature films. It'll be 10 times this big. You'll see all things going off here, and you'll see tens of grade nodes. You'll see, um, you know, a whole lot of heat more elements. There might be 3D elements. Mm. Um, you can actually paint 3D elements directly into the scene as well, which I won't do now because I'll probably just make a mess. Um, it really takes a, it just, you really have to plan it out. And it's, we haven't really haven't got much time to, uh, to do that at the moment. Yeah. But um, yeah, the sky's the limit, really. You can put thousands and thousands of elements into these scenes uh, with not a huge overhead, particularly if they're all just two-dimensional uh, objects like we have in this scene. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you start having 
completely three-dimensional objects. Yeah, it starts to get a bit heavier render, render, render wise. Yeah. And uh, when you actually press play, you'll see it'll take a long time for every frame to render uh, before we actually get a full, uh, a full scene going. Yeah. I've actually done, I've actually put this down quite low. Usually we do this at um, at least uh, 1080p, which is high definition, but I've actually just done this at 1280, uh, 720p, just so that we can get a render happening pretty quickly. Yep. Um, may as well just show you what this render looks like, um, just so we can get, a, get an idea of what one of the shots in this uh, music video looked like. And here we go. We can see even at this low resolution, it still takes a little bit of time for the computer to work out mm. what's going on. Um, it's working out all the blur on the roses. It's working out the blur on the background. It's working out all the grade in between. Um, yeah, basically what's happening is um, each one of these nodes is feeding through to the other and uh, everything's being calculated on the way through to the final viewer, which we have here. We just give this a few more seconds and we should see a final shot. So how long was the video originally when you did this piece? Uh, the video in total was a normal sort of pop music video. Yeah, it was about three, three, three and a half minutes, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, with a total of probably, or oh, would have had a hundred and something shots, I think 90 to a hundred shots. Uh, the Bart and I worked on sort of feverishly late at night. Uh, so here we go. We can oh, see yeah, yeah. how this all renders together like this. Another thing we'd probably do is add some grain. Um, I could probably actually do that just to see uh, if that helps. Um, usually what we do is put all these elements together and then we'll use some other elements to sort of help tie everything together as well. Uh, grain is a really good one because um, even though we don't actually have film grain on video anymore, it just gives things a really, really nice look. Here we can see, actually that's quite chunky, that grain, but I can turn the size of that grain down. We've actually got some presets here for film presets, old film cameras. Um, yeah, and you can see that sort of uh, puts grain over the entire scene and really helps it sell the fact that uh, this is just one image, that it isn't actually all these different layers, it's just one big image together. And when we press play on that, that'll take a little bit of time to render. But you can see in the background here, this grain is affecting this here, it's affecting a face, and it's really starting to look as so though this actually just is one image that was created in a camera. I've got a question while well, that's rendering then. So for sure. Nuke, if um, let's say a, a viewer out here is really interested uh, in, uh, and wants to learn a bit about it, now we, it is, uh, it's not a free piece of software. So unfortunately, ah, actually, oh, it, it oh, is it? actually. Well, oh. you can you can actually get a non-commercial version. Yeah, ah, if you go to okay. if you go to the Foundry website. Uh, just search for Nuke and the Foundry. You can actually download a version of Nuke and uh, when you run it, uh, I think you have to go through a few steps which are explained on the website, but so uh, you can actually launch it in non-commercial mode. So um, you can actually have a fully functional version of Nuke. Uh, the only limitations are its uh, resolution, which is high definition, which is yeah. fine for most things. This is what we did this music video in. And uh, so you can actually learn Nuke from the Foundry website completely for free with a fully functional version of the program. Oh, fantastic. Which is really amazing. Really, yeah. really amazing. Um, and are there, I take it there'd be YouTube tutorials which people could look up as well to learn? Millions, millions. <laughs> There's almost too many. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to find the good ones is hard, but the Foundry website <laughs> itself has got a really, really good set of tutorials on it that take yeah. you through a lot of stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. How do you find Nuke was, uh, when you learnt it? Um, not too bad, actually. I just started simple. That's the way to go. Yeah. Um, and you find yourself just adding nodes and adding nodes and adding nodes. You think, oh, I'd like this in here. I'd like that in there. Yeah. And it does get complex really, really quickly. So keeping everything yeah. really, really nicely arranged is, uh, is the key to it. That's why I sort of showed you you could put in these little extra dot nodes and things. Uh, beforehand, all these things were just straight lines going here. It gets messy extremely quickly, as you can yeah. imagine. Uh, so keeping it really, really neat is a fantastic thing to do. 
outside outside keeping it neat for anyone who is uh, downloading it or looking at trying it, do you have any bits of advice for them? Um, just find some interesting footage. Uh, one of the things sometimes a little bit hard to find is uh, some good footage to work with. Mm. But of course, um, cameras these days can take things in ultra high definition. Uh, what you have to do is obviously downscale that to high definition if you want to work in the free version of Nuke. Uh, but um, and doing green screen can be a bit tricky as well, uh, particularly um, trying to get a really, really nice evenly lit green screen behind yourself. That's the, There's actually a lot of tutorials on the net for that as well. Uh, but as I said, there's uh, in Photoshop, if anyone knows Photoshop, you can pretty much go in and just uh, start painting things, putting them in uh, into this sort of uh, layout that I've done. Um, if we look back at that three-dimensional view, uh, you can just lay things up any way you want, really, just to sort of get some kind of composite going. Um, there's actually, there is actually quite a lot of free stuff on the net that you can download as well. Um, just trying to think of I mean, Action VFX has some stuff, some things you have to pay for. It's not very expensive, but there's some good stuff there to practice with. Yeah. Um, the Foundry themselves, I think they've got some green screen footage and things on there that you can download to practice with, but I'm not sure exactly where. You'd have to have a search. But, um, yeah, there are, there's tons of stuff on the net to be able to uh, download and use for yourself. Uh, there's a whole heap of uh, footage sites uh, that are both paid. Some of them have got some free things on them uh, just for you to just to sort of draw you in a bit. But um, for not very much, you can get a subscription to some of these sites and download a whole ton of elements, explosions and skies and um, footage of people in front of green screen and, and things like that. You can actually bring into Nuke and practice this stuff yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And did you find uh, music videos pretty... Uh... I would be pretty common for uh, that sort of uh, in that line of work. What were some other projects that you worked on that you used Nuke for? Oh, most recently I worked on uh, Love and Monsters, which is on Netflix at the moment, sort of cool, funny monster film, uh, all shot in Queensland and uh, supposed to be in America, but it was shot in Queensland. <laughs> And uh, a whole heap of fantastic monsters and things in that. I was actually working as the lighter on that uh, show, yeah. uh, lighting some of the uh, fantastical creatures that uh, the, uh, the young uh, hero comes across. Um, I particularly worked on a shot with uh, a big centipede that comes out of the ground. Uh, he's, he's got this beautiful um, Kelpie, or red healer Kelpie yeah. with him. And uh, there's a scene where... Uh, the Kelpie sort of is hiding under this duck boat, this big sort of like pedal boat that's been deposited in a forest. And uh, the dog can hear something that he can't see here, uh, you know, obviously very high pitched. And um, he's sort of looking around and suddenly this gigantic creature comes out from under the, the ground. Um, I lit that all using a program called Katana and uh, Renderman, which is the rendering software. Yeah. And then in Nuke, um, I composite that all together. Um, Lighters are usually responsible for just putting together a, what they call a slap comp, uh, which is pretty much putting all the elements together, yeah. and then you pass it on to another compositor who will do all the grading and all the color mixing and um, really make that shot sort of sing. Um, yeah. So if you look look on Netflix for uh, Love and Monsters, uh, and you look for the uh, centipede that comes out of the ground, that was one of my shots. And that was heaps <laughs> of fun. <laughs> nice. All right. Um... All right, we'll definitely check that one out, everyone who's watching. <laughs> um, go to Netflix tonight. There you go. You've got something to do after the live stream tonight. <laughs> um, but also then uh, you've got... So the a lot of your work history, I guess, was in film. Were there any other kind of other areas that you could use Nuke or compositing in as well? Oh, definitely. I mean, you see it all the time on uh, TV news, um, documentaries. Um, there's so many places you wouldn't even know it's used because yeah. it's just so beautifully used. Um, uh, things uh, seamlessly integrated into fantastical background plates or even very realistic background plates. Um, uh, an example, so I've been watching Mad Men again recently and a lot of the stuff out of the train windows, a lot of the stuff out of the car windows, um, some of the stuff out of the building windows, all composited in Nuke um, after the fact. So used all over the place, but you just never know it. It's just yeah. so beautifully used. Yeah. And a good compositor is quite highly demanded, I guess, in the industry as well. 
Oh yes, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. <Yeah. laughs> um, even with this new uh, LED uh, LCD background uh, technology, where you've got these big LCD walls that are taking the place of green screen, yeah. Um, even with that. Uh, there's still a lot of foreground elements that need to be composited. There's wind and rain and snow and uh, uh, all sorts of things that might happen uh, along the way. Explosions, um, smoke in particular, things like that. I think this this scene had a lot of smoke going through the background originally yeah. as well. It would just take a lot t long time to render if I put it in now. Um, but, yeah, yeah, used absolutely everywhere. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm going to just quickly pass over to you to um, finish up in Nuke there, and I'm going to check the chat for any last questions uh, that have come through, or any mostly questions for Mike in regards to compositing. But if you have any AIE questions, by all means, chuck them in chat as well. So, Mike, I'll just quickly chuck um, you up on the screen there with Nuke for a bit. Sure thing. Oh, all right. So we don't have any last questions uh, that have come through. So that well, thank you so much for everyone uh, who joined and watched Mike's uh, little compositing workshop tonight. Um, I take it compositing is not something that uh, is meant to be learnt in 40 minutes or an hour. <laughs> um, I it takes a lot longer. <laughs> um, but by all means, there's uh, free resources uh, on the web that we talked about earlier. Um, but of course, we've got fabulous teachers here at AIE, such as Mike, um, who are experts who would love for you to come through the doors and to be able to teach you the skills that uh, he's learnt in, was it 25 years in the industry? Yeah, pretty much. God, yeah, it seems like a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? It's the, that you would have um, started in the industry when AIE started as, uh, as an educator, 25 years this oh, year. Oh, true. Yeah. Oh, right, of course. Oh, yep. well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. About 96. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to quickly just throw up on the screen for everybody our website. So if you do want to know more information, um, once again, we've got lots of resources, but reach out to your local AIE campus or um, even better, come along to one of our events. We run a range of different uh, events from Information Evening, Industry Experience Day. This one here is probably my favourite. So. Um, Industry Experience Day, you come onto campus uh, and we run you through an hour workshop. Um, so you're on the computer, you're hands on, which is what AI we're all about. Um, and you're going to be doing an hour of game design, an hour of programming, uh, an hour of film art, and an hour of game art as well. So uh, a fantastic way for you to kind of learn a bit about each of the streams uh, and find which one you enjoy the most. And of course, we've got our uh, open days uh, that run throughout the year as well. So uh, alike with any open day, there'll be a guest speaker presentations and we'll be um, talking to students and answering any questions uh, about enrolling for next year. So we do, we are still open, I should say as well, uh, for J our July intake. Um, so anyone who is thinking of starting in July, by all means, uh, it is not too late. Jump onto the website now, hit apply now um, and just fill in the information, um, all our courses are on here, career courses, uh, and as Mike touched on earlier, we are launching our film and virtual production course, uh, which very is very exciting. So exciting. <laughs> um, very exciting. First in is, the world, too. Yes, uh, and it's just such new technology, uh, and it's awesome to be on the forefront. Um, when we speak with students at careers, at, uh, careers expos and at schools um, about potential pathways, it's really exciting to tell them that we have a few, but they're still going to be more made and the students educating themselves in these areas are going to be the ones pioneering the future for the industry as well. So exactly. yeah, um, really, really exciting course uh, with uh, uh, me. I'm not even a film person. I can't, I'm, I'm pretty tempted to do it. Part, part time. <laughs> um, but yeah, lots of uh, information on our website there. Uh, but once again, if you, uh, not too into reading, um, just get in touch with your local AI campus and we are absolutely here to help you. But um, for everyone who joined tonight, a big thank you. Uh, and on behalf of everyone watching as well, big thank you to you, Mike. Oh, thanks so much, Matt. Um, yeah, I just wanted to remind everyone this was from Stonefield's music video, Put Your Curse On Me. So have a look at that as well. And uh, yeah, bump up their, their looks, their views. Be great.
Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We hope you have a lovely night and we will see you on the next live stream. Fantastic. Thanks, Matt. Good night, everybody. Bye.